Jakob Ingebrigtsen is undoubtedly one of the fastest runners in the world right now. He has multiple championship medals to his name, and him, along with his brothers and superstar triathletes Gustav Eden and Christian Blumenfeld, have generated the Norwegian hype train, mostly because of their use of these things. Lactate meters. Being the chronic self-experimenter that I am, I decided to pull out my lactate meter and try not only lactate controlled training, but one of the most hyped aspects of the Norwegian training method, that is double threshold days. My experience with double threshold days changed the way I look at training load distribution, but it is definitely not for everyone. So stick around as I share my training, my experiences, my race results after a block of Norwegian method training to see if a double threshold day could be an option for your training. Before getting into my training, let's first recap what the Norwegian method actually is and what are double threshold days. The Norwegian method of threshold training targets high volumes between the aerobic and anaerobic threshold, which for most people can be thought of as a bit faster than marathon intensity to a bit faster than half marathon intensity. And I think as a scientist, it's important to note that while the Norwegians have popularized the lactate training methodology, it's nothing new. A bunch of Swedish scientists took a heap of runners from the 1979 Stockholm Marathon and tested their blood lactates throughout the marathon. And they titled the paper in 1981, Onset of Blood Lactate Accumulation During Marathon Running. And they showed that your running pace at your lactate threshold had a 92% correlation with your marathon time. And that's a finding that still holds true today despite the massive improvement in marathoning times. Now, while the Norwegian methodology around testing lactates and using it to control training intensities isn't really that new, something that is quite new is the way they go about it within their training load distribution. Because if I asked you, what's the ideal training load distribution? I'm sure a lot of you will say 80-20. The Norwegians say 65-35. At least according to Arturo Casado's 2023 paper, which he co-authored with ex-professional runner and Norwegian Marius Barkin, who wrote the now infamous blog around his use of lactate meters and double threshold days during his time as a professional runner in the late 90s and early 2000s. 35% high intensity, you're probably thinking. Well, no, not high intensity, moderate intensity. This is one of the secrets of the Norwegian training method, high volumes without the high intensity. And one of the methods for achieving such high volumes of moderate intensity training is by doubling up on their threshold sessions within a single day, double threshold days. Which is what drew me to wanting to try the Norwegian approach because one, I mean, we can all admit double threshold days look hardcore. Two, I was training for one of my most intensive racing blocks where I had a half marathon, a couple weeks later, I had a half marathon, then a 10K the next day. And two weeks after that, I had a 60K ultra marathon with 3,000 meters of elevation. Now let's get into my training experiences and race results, because I didn't just roll out of bed and start doing double threshold days. Like everything that I do, I took a long-term structured approach and planned out how I'd progress towards being able to do double threshold days. And that was by doing a singular tempo session and then a threshold session. And after around a month or six weeks, I then combined the two. Wait, did you say tempo? I thought this was double threshold training. This would be a common misconception of the Norwegian method because everyone kind of uses the term threshold interchangeably when referring to LT1 and LT2. Lactate threshold one is the first point where lactate begins to accumulate in the bloodstream. It can still be steady state, that's around your aerobic threshold. And lactate 2, or lactate turn point, ventilatory threshold 2, is what everyone refers to when they're thinking threshold training. That point at which you go beyond and you exit a steady state. Lactate begins to accumulate, acidosis occurs, and you get the burning sensation in your legs. So with that in mind, here's a standard week of my Norwegian method training. As you can see, I'm training 6 days a week, 12 of which were super easy, around 10Ks. Then I did one long run, which I was doing midweek, and that was around two hours with a thousand meters of elevation. With that long run, I was thinking ahead to the ultra marathon I had at the end of my training block, 
as well as the strength required for the back half, back quarter of a half marathon. Then I had a VO2 max fartlek run, which I'll touch on why that was in there later. And then I have the double threshold day that I was doing on Saturday. In the morning, I was targeting my half marathon specific upper threshold where I needed the most quality out of my training. In the evening, when I was a bit more tired, I targeted that ultra marathon specificity. My weekly totals end up being around 8 hours or 60 miles, around 100 k's a week. And being the Norwegian method, I was controlling almost all of my interval sessions with a lactate meter rather than pace, power or heart rate, just because I wanted to commit to their method of training. So why the VO2 max fartlek run? Well, Maris Barkin, who I mentioned earlier, who wrote the popular blog about lactate double threshold, training said he always incorporated some X intensity during different phases that he found to make the training across a week or month more effective and I was doing an experiment so I thought yeah why not I'll throw some of those in there too. Now I'd love to get down into the weeds about my training and my lactate testing but I know most of you are just going to click off. So let's get into my experiences, my race results and my recommendations for you if you're looking to try double threshold Norwegian method training. So I have three big takeaways from my experiment of Norwegian training and double threshold days and the first one's probably going to make you laugh because I would not incorporate the VO2 mats fart that runs. They just made me way too tired. If you're a professional runner like Marius was and you're hitting 180k plus a week then sure you probably got the capacity to throw a few more sessions in there but I definitely did not. I found with the long run and the double day, I was getting more than enough. Biggest takeaway number two was, man, I was surprised with how much quality I could get into a single day with double thresholds. I mean, I was hitting about 40 to 50 K, so like 25 to 30 miles of high quality training without getting overly tired. If I was to do that in a single session, which I've tried before, I get completely stuffed and all the quality goes out after around 30 k's or 20 miles. Not only was I getting crazy good quality out of a single day, which I was calling Super Saturday, but then I was able to have Sunday completely off and having a weekend day completely off when you're running six days a week allows for so much more time with family as well as recovery and all the chores we have to do around the house. Biggest takeaway number three was how much mental prep it took to complete double threshold training. I mean, it sounds super sexy and hardcore, but the reality of planning and allotting essentially two, three hour blocks for your training when you incorporate getting ready and showering and everything is really intense. And by the end of the day, when you've got to head out for another big session, it can be so taxing. So having enough food on board and having all the planning took so much more out of me than I thought. Right, so did it work? Let's throw my results up on the screen. I'll touch on each of the races and then I'll get into my recommendations for you. So my first race was a half marathon where I got a PR. 113.20, which was maybe a 20 second PR and I felt so strong. But then I had the half marathon and the 10K and you're probably wondering why a 10K the day after? Well, I was traveling from New Zealand to the Gold Coast for the Gold Coast Running Festival. Half marathon was a target and then the next day they had the marathon and the 10K and I thought, traveled all this way I might as well do both so the half marathon went appallingly I have no idea why all of my data looked amazing I felt amazing I got into the race maybe three miles five k's in felt like someone had pulled the plug and the energy just completely fell out now at that point after the race I thought I just overdone it I got my training all wrong and I'd gone in a bit cooked but then the next day I ran a 10k after obviously running a 116 half and I ran 33, 39, and I felt so strong. I mean, a bit tired in my legs, but I was able to keep pushing and I felt great. Right in line with where I thought I would be trying to run like a 112. So I really don't know what happened there. But I think being able to back up with 33 minute 10K the day after doing a relatively average half for me shows how much strength and anaerobic threshold sustainability I was able to build through this double threshold modality of training. Then I moved on to a couple of weeks later, an ultra marathon, which is kind of like a fun icing on the cake event that I was going to do with my wife. And the biggest takeaway here was that doing doubles, even though they were equating to 40, 50 Ks in a day, does not, at least for me, replicate doing the big block of singular 
intense training, which I would normally do for an ultra marathon. And that leads me to my recommendations for you. Should you try double threshold days? The short answer, yes. I think double days present a lot of benefits for busy runners because you're able to get almost an entire week's quality running into one single day, which allows for more recovery across an entire week. So if you are going to incorporate double threshold days into your training, where and when? So I wouldn't do any double threshold as a new thing within six weeks of a big race. You wanna be doing it late base phase, early build phase. I recommend doing your high quality, most intense session in the morning, and then for your second session, doing that as hill repeats to reduce the overall lower limb loading so that it can just minimize the injury risk if you are prone to lower limb injuries. So that would be something like 10 times 1K on 90 seconds rest in the morning with a long warm up, long cool down. And then in the evening, you can do 10 to 20 minute tempo hill repeats. And I know you heard me mention injury just before and you're probably thinking, double, surely this is just a recipe for overtraining and injury. And I think, yes, if you're trying to do doubles on top of your regular running weekly program, then you're gonna massively increase your risk of injury. But if you're able to do doubles and replace and remove one of your high intensity sessions so that you can do two, obviously in one day and have the following day as a full recovery day, yes, you're enhancing your acute training load, but you're also enhancing your overall recovery. This clustering of training load, which is what Seb Co used to do, can sometimes be better than distributing all your runs across a week with less recovery time in between. And this is why I'm telling you double threshold days are definitely a case of try before you buy and why you need to do them at least six weeks out from a key event. So you can just test the waters to see if it is going to be something that's right for you. Now, the other question you probably have is, do I need a lactate meter? No, definitely not. I mean, sure, it can give you a little bit more in-depth insight into what's happening internally, but nowadays, with pace, power, and heart rate, and the information I shared in this video on how to combine them all to maximize every single training session and race, I'm sure you'll have more than enough data to control your training. All right, see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.